Okay. Well, the next question that we got on the menu today is what is the limit of sine of x divided by x as x approaches infinity? And we can rewrite this uh, in, as the limit form like this. Lim, lim, short for limit, x approaches infinity. That's a very big number of sine of x divided by x. Okay, um, let's just like kind of get a feeling for what these numbers are as x gets bigger. So, and, and if we look at the two things individually, like the sine x and the 1 over x, um, we can kind of get some clues based on this. So we know that sine x looks like this. Sine of x is like this. So here we got positive 1, here we got negative 1, and it will never be a value that is outside the range of sine of um, 1 or negative 1, right? It will just look like this. So negative 1 is always less than or equal to sine of x, which is always less than or equal to positive 1. Okay, so we know the number on the numerator here uh, for the limit is always going to be between 1 and negative 1. So as time goes on, you know, we're still just going to see between 1 and negative 1. So, you know, the thing about fractions is what the fraction gets bigger as the top gets bigger. But I mean, if the top is always the same, well, you know, then we're only going to worry about the bottom. Now... If we were to draw out um, 1 over x, it would look a little something like this, like that and like that. Of course we've got a vertical asymptote, but we're really just worrying uh, as it goes towards here. Okay, you can see like, you know, the bigger number that you divide, that you have for x, it, it means like it's 1 over a bigger number. That means the number is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So if the top is going to be sine of x, and it's always going to be between 1 and negative 1, and the bottom is going to get larger and larger and larger, well, no matter what, if x gets really, really big to like, let's say x gets to 5 trillion, you know, anything... It's going to be like between 1 and negative 1, a very small number divided by 5 trillion. Well, that's going to be pretty much 0. So based on that feeling alone, we can kind of conclude that this uh, limit is going to approach 0. Um, but we can get more rigorous in the proof instead of just our feeling of it. And um, we can do it with the squeeze theorem, also known as the sandwich theorem. I like this theorem because I like sandwiches and squeezing them. Yeah. <laughs> so, the squeeze theorem is basically saying that um, we know, um, let's say we know the limit of, um, actually, so squeeze theorem, it looks like this. Suppose we have f of x which is always less than or equal to g of x, which is always less than or equal to h of x. E, F, G, H, you know, it's an alphabet party. Um, if we know the limits of, if the limits of f of x and h of x are the same, g of x must have the same limit. Okay, so something that we can know about this situation, about sine of x over x, is that, well, it's always going to be bigger, it's pretty much always going to be bigger than zero. Oh, 
over x and which is pretty much always going to be smaller than um, than 1 over x because the sine x term is going to be like a, a decimal number like you know maybe 0 0.5 between uh, it's, it's always between 1 and negative 1 so it's never going to like increase it so we know that if we know the limit well the limit of 0 approaching infinity is definitely 0 and the limit of 1 over x as x approaches infinity um, I'll actually write that out so limit infinity of 0 is equal to 0 and the limit of x approaches infinity for 1 over x is also 0 well hey we'll apply our we'll pull out our sandwich we'll pull out our squeeze theorem and we know that well the limit of sine x divided by x that's got to be 0 as well okay so it's just more of a rigorous proof but um the more you get practice with this um you can kind of just like get a feeling for it or you can just put it on a graphing calculator and just uh, see you know when it's uh, really big where does it go that can also be nice clues because uh deep math deep and rigorous mathematical proofs are not always um mandatory so yeah this will be d above solution is always is correct <laughs>